I was always interested in aircraft since I was a boy. Um, I'm 51 years old now. I um, uh, had model airplane sawdust and glue all over my room when I was a kid. I basically couldn't find my own bed because of all kinds of models hanging from every nook and cranny in my, in my room. And this was back in uh, Spitsbergen, Norway, north of Norway. I actually grew up in a town that's the northernmost place in the world. Uh, from there, I started flying with uh, Mr. Tiefenthal, which was my uh, German teacher in high school's husband. And he had an airplane, a Jodel in Spitsbergen. So I learned to fly, or didn't really learn to fly there, but get my first ride in a small aircraft. And then uh, from there to hang gliders, we, we did hang gliding on the island up there in the, in the ice and the snow and used our snowmobiles to tow the hang gliders up on the mountains and throw ourselves off. And we didn't really get any lift, but it was a pretty ride, you know, gliding down along the glaciers. And, uh, and so that was the start of the aviation. Then I realized that to, to continue on in aviation, I would uh, probably have to leave Norway because uh, flying is so expensive and and there's not a lot of flight schools in Norway. So I came to the United States as an exchange student way back when, uh, finished that and then stayed another year and got my private pilot's license in Rochester, New York. Went back to Norway, bought a plane, a Cessna 170B on skis and flew that for a year. Thought I knew everything there was to know about flying, but realized that I wasn't gonna have a career with Scandinavian Airlines systems uh, or Broughton Safe, which was, or Widerer, which are pretty much the three airlines in Norway at the time, if I did not have a university degree and a commercial pilot's license. So came back to the United States and uh, initially was going to go to Embry Riddle, and then decided that it was a great idea to accelerate the process and go to Eagle Flight Center at a school also in Daytona Beach, uh, but going around the university process sounded like a good idea at the time. Um, but uh, wisened up after some time, did get all my ratings, but then went to Daniel Webster College in Nashua, New Hampshire, and did it the proper way with the aviation management degree. Uh, I got my aircraft mechanics license, uh, aviation management, uh, all, the rest of my flight ratings and flight instructor and so forth and so on, and flew then a couple of years professionally, uh, smaller twin engine airplanes uh, up in uh, New England. Um, started to kind of hear the buzz around the airports about how this pilot didn't like his job, this pilot didn't like his job, uh, this, this, this pilot didn't like her job, and everyone's talking about that the next plane, the next uh, career, the, the regional, the international, and uh, it was just always like a jumping but to the next, to the next, to the next, and nobody in the aviation field seemed to be happy doing what they were doing. And that started all the way from you know, the first, first right in, 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 in school all the way through the instructors and it was just always the next. So I decided that maybe there's something more fun and um, of course my mother freaked out because after all this schooling and, uh, and, uh, and all that I decided that I wanted to build home built planes. And uh, right after college and a couple of years of flying and of course finances were still tight uh, but I ended up then um, uh, buying a partially completed very easy that I then finished um, didn't have money for an engine and that's how the whole engine thing started. So that's, that's 30 years ago and uh, there was a, a Subaru um, that I uh, built a belt drive for and flew to Oshkosh from New Hampshire for the whole week including uh, staying there and, and camping and fuel and everything. I think I had like $250 and I made, made the whole trip all the way out and all the way back. So it's a very efficient airplane. Um, and then uh, people just started asking me, you know, can you make me an intake manifold? Can you make a production drive for me? And so then I started doing less commercial flying and uh, a lot more with the uh, home builds. And back then, everybody seemed to be in the business that we are really kind of the only ones left in. And that was, there was Subi like, there was Formula Power, there was, there was all kinds of uh, Subaru conversion, VW conversion, all kinds of companies converting auto engines to aircraft. Uh, they're all long gone many years ago. Um, I stuck, it, stuck uh, with it uh, through a couple of recessions and, you know, uh, learned a lot through, up through the years. I have good reputation, bad reputation. I still have some of my first engines flying and I have some people that don't like me because we went through, um, you know, went bankrupt and all that. So, but that's many years ago also now. And now the Viking aircraft engines has been very stable for the, since 2008. And, um, we do. Uh, we have put all that knowledge into the engines that we do now. We 
Still, we do more test flying than we've ever done. Uh, every model gets uh, several hundred hours of test flying. And uh, right now we're having fun uh, with our latest engine, which is the 90 horse, uh, migrating off the Hondas and onto the Mitsubishi platform and building those up. And uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun and uh, here we are today.